He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sins. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. And if I let him, if I love him, if I follow him, he can take away my sin, my sorrows, my pain, forgive my past. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. My father and my mother, my sister, my grandparents, my family, they all shall be made alive. In Jesus Christ, I found new life. I have found new life. In Jesus Christ, I have found new life. Hallelujah. 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 King of kings. Lord of lords. Friend of friends. And he shall reign forever. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Easter, our thoughts focus on the atoning sacrifice and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This past year, I've been thinking and pondering about the resurrection more than normal. Nearly one year ago, our daughter Elisa died. She had struggled with cancer for almost eight years with several surgeries, many different treatments, exciting miracles, and deep disappointments. We watched her physical condition deteriorate as she came to the close of her mortal life. It was excruciating to see that happen to our precious daughter, that bright-eyed little baby who'd grown up to be a talented, wonderful woman, wife, and mother. I thought my heart would break. Last Easter, a little over a month before she passed away, Elisa wrote, Easter is a reminder of all that I hope for, for myself, that someday I will be healed and someday I will be whole. Someday I won't have any metal or plastic inside of me. Someday my heart will be free of fear and my mind free of anxieties. I'm not praying that this happens soon, but I'm so glad I truly believe in a beautiful afterlife. The resurrection of Jesus Christ ensures the very things Elisa hoped for and instills in each of us a reason for the hope that is in us. President Gordon B. Hinckley referred to the resurrection as the greatest of all events in the history of mankind. The resurrection is brought to pass by the atonement of Jesus Christ and is pivotal to the great plan of salvation. We are spirit children of heavenly parents. When we come to this earth life, our spirit is united with our body. We experience all the joys and challenges associated with mortal life. When a person dies, their spirit is separated from their body. Resurrection makes it possible for a person's spirit and body to be united again. Only this time, that body will be immortal and perfect, not subject to pain, disease, or other problems. After resurrection, the spirit will never again be separated from the body because the Savior's resurrection brought total victory over death. In order to obtain our eternal destiny, we need to have this immortal soul, a spirit and body united forever. With spirit and immortal body inseparably connected, we can receive a fullness of joy. In fact, without the resurrection, 
we could never receive a fullness of joy, but would be miserable forever. Even faithful, righteous people view the separation of their bodies from their spirits as captivity. We are released from this captivity through the resurrection, which is redemption from the bands or chains of death. There is no salvation without both our spirit and our body. Each of us has physical, mental, and emotional limitations and weaknesses. These challenges, some of which seem so intractable now, will eventually be resolved. None of these problems will plague us after we are resurrected. Elisa researched survival rates for persons with the type of cancer she had, and the numbers were not encouraging. She wrote, but there is a cure, so I'm not scared. Jesus has already cured my cancer and yours. We can replace the word cancer with any of the other physical, mental, or emotional ailments we may face. Because of the resurrection, they have already been cured too. The miracle of resurrection, the ultimate cure, is beyond the power of modern medicine, but it's not beyond the power of God. We know it can be done because the Savior is resurrected and will bring to pass the resurrection of each of us too. The resurrection of the Savior proves that He is the Son of God and that what he taught is real. He is risen, as he said. There could be no stronger proof of his divinity than him coming forth from the grave with an immortal body. We know of witnesses to the resurrection in New Testament times. In addition to the women and men we read about in the Gospels, the New Testament assures us that hundreds actually saw the resurrected Lord. And the Book of Mormon tells of many hundreds more the multitude went forth and thrust their hands into his side. And they did see with their eyes and did feel with their hands and did know of a surety and did bear record that it was he of whom it was written by the prophets that should come. To those ancient witnesses are added witnesses in the latter days. In fact, in the opening scene of this dispensation, Joseph Smith saw the resurrected Savior with the Father. Living prophets and apostles have testified of the reality of the resurrected living Christ. So we may say, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And each of us can be part of a cloud of witnesses who knows through the power of the Holy Ghost that what we celebrate on Easter actually happened, that the resurrection is real. The reality of the resurrection of the Savior overwhelms our heartbreak with hope because with it comes the assurance that all the other promises of the gospel are just as real, promises that are no less miraculous than the resurrection. We know He has the power to cleanse us from all our sins. We know He has taken upon Himself all our infirmities, pains, and the injustices we have suffered. We know that He has risen from the dead with healing in His wings. We know that He can make us whole no matter what is broken in us. We know that He shall wipe away all tears from our eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. We know that we can be made perfect through Jesus who wrought out this perfect atonement if we will just have faith and follow him. Toward the end of the inspiring oratorio Messiah, Handel put to be beautiful music the Apostle Paul's words that rejoice over the resurrection. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. The trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? 
O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for the blessings that are ours because of the atonement and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For all who've laid a child in the grave, or wept over the casket of a spouse, or grieved over the death of a parent or someone they loved, the resurrection is a source of great hope. What a powerful experience it will be to see them again, not just as spirits, but with resurrected bodies. I long to see my mother again and feel her gentle touch and look into her loving eyes. I want to see my father smile and hear his laugh and see him as a resurrected, perfect being. With an eye of faith, I picture Elisa completely beyond the reach of any earthly troubles or any sting of death, a resurrected, perfected Elisa, victorious and with a fullness of joy. A few Easter's ago, she wrote simply, life through his name, so much hope, always, through everything. I love Easter to remind me. I testify of the reality of the resurrection. Jesus Christ lives, and because of him, we will all live again. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.